Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Today we're going to start another screencast and we are going to be looking at the orographic effect also known as the rain shadow effect. Uh, these terms can be used interchangeably and you'll see where this name rain shadow effect comes from in a little bit. We first need to start with a question is if we look at an air, uh, two areas along the same line of latitude uh, very closely and very close to each other in the United States, we want to look at why they're so different. So an example we can use is California and Nevada. California, picture on the left, right here. We can see that it's this nice lush green landscape. And then if we go over to the east a little bit more, we have Nevada. We can see that they're definitely drastically different between the two locations. So what is, what's going on with these two areas that make them so different? Well, if we take a look at the map of the United States, we can see that California and Nevada are separated right here by a set of mountain ranges. Also, California is close to the water. So we have two things at work here that make California and Nevada different. So we have California close to water, and then Nevada on another side of mountains. Okay, so those are two biggest differences right here, and they're going to lead to a, a big difference in their actual climate and weather patterns. So what we see is California is green and lush, while Nevada is dry and arid. One reason is that coastal cities receive moisture from the ocean. Their proximity to the ocean means that there's more humidity in the air and it can get more rain. The warm, wet air from the Pacific rises over California, Seattle, and Washington, so we're looking at the whole west coast of the United States, and releases rain on them, and then heads eastward towards Nevada. You're going to see exactly the implications of this in a moment. And here we go. Here's our diagram. This diagram definitely copied down. It is probably one of the more important diagrams when we talk about the orographic effect or just weather patterns in general. And what we have is our warm, moist air. So it evaporates from the ocean and it's going to make its way this way. Now notice as it moves, it hits the mountain. It has no choice. It has to go over the mountain. So remember, as we increase our altitude, or go up a mountain, temperatures decrease. Well, if the temperature's decreasing, it's also gonna get closer to the dew point. So it cools, cools to dew point. And what happens when it cools to the dew point? It condenses, and we get a cloud to form. Notice that also as it rises, it expands. So it expands, cools, cools the dew point, condenses, and eventually rains on this side. This side of the mountain where it rains is known as the windward side of the mountain. It's where the wind is coming from. The air then makes it up and over the mountain where it descends. And when it descends, it warms and compresses. Warms, compresses. It released all that humidity on the windward side. And now this area is really dry also known as the leeward side of the mountain. This diagram is really important. You want to copy it with what I have written on it or not. It's completely up to you, but definitely this diagram is pretty important. Therefore, as an air mass travels over the Rockies, it is now dry since all the rain fell on the west coast or on that windward side of the mountain. And this is known as the orographic effect. Oh, actually, if I go back for a second, and then you can see here that term rain shadow, where it came from. Since the rain is over here, no rain over here. It's called rain shadow. Sorry about that. So anyway, this is the orographic effect or rain shadow effect. And the windward side is wet, leeward side is dry. 
That's it. I hope you enjoyed that small little screencast on the orographic effect or the rain shadow effect. If there's anything else, you can ask any questions at any time. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have a good day.